In this video, we're going to focus on the dials and the buttons that are on the side of the watch. We're going to look at how we create them and the materials and so on. As usual, we're going to go into our batch. And we're going to start with a clean action. So drag an action node into your batch schematic and let's go directly into our action. By now, I'm pretty sure you know the process. We're going to drag a 3D shape into our schematic, our action schematic. Let's delete the G-mask and the axis that is attached to that. Select your 3D shape node, then hit the G key, and then add a G-mask ellipse. Hit F4 for our result view. And then holding the Alt and the Shift key, we'll click from the center and drag out a circle. Now this one doesn't need to be very large. Something about this size will work good. Again, yours does not have to be exactly as what we're showing here, but try to be close. Let's enable our shading options from our node preferences. Let's select the axis that controls all of this, and then let's just rotate it a little bit on the X. Select your 3D shape node, and then while looking at our end result again, let's set our depth for our extrusion to 25. Okay, maybe that's a little too much, maybe 20. Go back to our schematic, and we want to make a duplicate of this, so make sure you select all the nodes, and then hit Control D and then select the axis for our duplication and the top axis that is and then go down and click the reset button to reset all of its parameters and then drag off our first axis the original one and connect it as a parent to this axis now with that new axis selected the duplicated one let's go back to our end result and let's take our z parameter and drag it up so that it is above our original piece of geometry I'll set my Z position to about 46. Then go back to our schematic view and let's select our 3D shape and back in our end result view. We want to adjust our extrude, or the depth of this new geometry. I'll enter a depth amount of 75 for this new 3D shape. And then select the axis that is controlling our G mask. And we'll scale that down a little bit. Something like 95. No, eh, wait. How about 93? Go back and select the axis for the 3D shape and let's, let's bring it down a little bit in our Z position to intersect between the two shapes. I'll put it at 39. Back in the schematic, let's select the first 3D shape and the axis and G mask below it and let's duplicate that. And then we'll add another axis into the schematic and connect it to this new 3D shape we just duplicated. And then drag off the main axis once again and connect that as a parent to this new axis we just added. We're going to use this geometry for the red ring that you see right here on the button. Back in action, let's go to the end result view again. But make sure you have the axis for our new geometry selected. Now we'll adjust the Z position for this new geometry. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. So I've got it set about 46. And now we wanna adjust the depth value for this, it's extrusion, so make sure we select our 3D shape. And let's change the depth value to eight. It just makes it a little thinner than the bottom geometry that we duplicated. Go back and select the axis for the G-mask for this shape. I'll take it down to about 97, so it's just a little smaller. And then I'll hit the I key to turn off our icons to see clearly what we're doing. Go back and select the axis for this geometry, and then back in our result view. I'll set the Z position for this to about 35. Now we're going to adjust the profile for each one of these pieces of geometry. So back in the schematic, let's select our first 3D shape we created. And for the object settings, let's go to the profile controls. First, we'll adjust our angle value, and then we'll come down and adjust our curvature. Then we can go back and fine tune the angle a little more if we want. So I'll set the angle to about 18 and our curvature to about 0.55. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Let's go back to the schematic and select the second 3D shape. For this geometry, which is the biggest part of the button, I can set the angle a little bit, and then the curvature, let's take it all the way to one, and then I'll adjust the angle again. Let's put it to 1.30, so you get just a nice little edge, a little curvature at the edge there. 
Let's go back to the schematic and select our third geometry. This is the geometry that's going to be the red ring, if you remember. Let's go and adjust the angle a little bit. Again, I'll take the curvature all the way to one, and we'll keep the angle at like two. So we're looking at the edge, we've got a nice little bevel profile for this geometry. So now we've got our geometry completed. I like this, this looks good. Now we're gonna assign a steel looking material as we did before, similar to the case of the watch that we created in the earlier tutorial. So select our first 3D shape once again. Let's go to our node bin for action. Hit the S key over our node bin. And then let's drag a substance PBR into our schematic. Go to the metal subdirectory and then select the metal steel once again. I'll move these nodes over a little bit and then let's hit F4 to see the end result. Just as we saw when we were creating the metal shape, we see the material is now applied to it, but because of the lights, we really can't see it. So let's go back to our schematic view. So let's select our camera inside here, and then let's go down to our bin, hit the I key, and drag an IBL into the schematic to attach it to our camera. Hit F4 again for our end result, and now we can see how the IBL, the image-based lighting, is affecting our geometry. Just as we did before, we're gonna change the texture that's being used with our IBL light. So go to the object parameters and go to the, the read file menu, click the load button. Once again, we're gonna use the empty lab EXR file. So select that and choose load. So I'm liking the way this looks just like we did before. Let's go back to our schematic and let's connect this material to the other 3D shapes. So click off each one of the geometries, the 3D shapes and drag and connect it to our material. Hit the L key to get our light link tool and drag off our shader and connect that to the other two 3D shapes. Hit F4 and now we can see how our IBL and our material is affecting our geometry. Now we want to set the material, the metal material to be black. So let's go back to the schematic again. Click on your substance PBR texture. Go to the advanced tab and for the steel color, which is gray currently, click on that and change it to black. Hit F4 and we can see now our material is black. Now actually we want to change the material that is on this ring that's in the center. So back in the schematic, let's duplicate this material. So hold the Alt key and click on the material node and then hit Control D, which duplicates all of it. I'll just move it over here to give us a little more room. And then connect our 3D shape to this new material and cut the connection line to the original material. And we have to do the same thing for our shader. So get the light link tool, hit the L key, and then cut that connection from the original shader to this geometry. And drag the shader to the 3D shape, this new one, the last one. Then select our substance PBR2, the duplicate. Come down to our parameters and click on the texture button to access the presets. Choose change preset. Go to the man-made subdirectory and then select the plastic base preset. So this is a different material. We'll have a little bit of a different look than our metal, which is what we want. Select our PBR2 again. Go to our advanced settings and let's change its color. Hit F4 so we can see the end result while we're doing this. Let's just change the color to a red. Now we can see we've changed the color and the texture and the look of our red ring that we have wrapping around our metal button. Now let's add a reflection map into the scene. And we want that to be affecting our black material objects. Let's go out to the action schematic by hitting the escape key. Once again, we're gonna use a substance noise as we've done in the past. So hit the S key and then drag a substance noise node into the batch schematic. Select the caustic substance noise as we did before. Let's add a color corrector to refine the end result of this substance noise. Set the gain to 20. Now we need to add this as a input for our action. So select the action tool, the action node, and hit control N and then connect the end result of our color correction and the substance noise. And to the main input for our new layer, let's go back into the action schematic. Let's delete the automatically generated 
image and its axis. Select the reflection image for this substance PBR. And let's make sure we have that selected in our media list and click apply. Now the metal buttons have a reflection map on them. Select the axis over the reflection map and then let's scale this to a much higher value. Let's try 1000 and see how that looks. There's a much softer look to it now. Let's decrease some of the noise or the texture that's on this button. So back in the schematic, once again, select our substance PBR number one, and let's lower our dirt value to zero and the rust value to zero also. And let's lower our surface imperfection. Let's set all of them to zero so we have no dirt, no rust, and no imperfections. And then let's fine tune the steel roughness. We'll decrease it. I'll set it to 0 0.105. Somewhere around there will be fine. So now if we go back to our schematic, we select the parent axis for everything, come back into our view, and as we rotate it on the X, we can see how it's interacting with our IBL and with all the textures and reflections that we've applied. Now let's go back to the very end result and let's talk about creating this button right here, the larger one. This is much simpler because it's, it's only one piece of geometry, first of all, but it's also a simpler shape. So let's go back to our action node and let's go into our action schematic. Let's zoom, let's zoom back and move over, give ourselves a little more space to work in. I'll hold the Alt or the Option key and I'm gonna select the top axis, our parent axis, and then hit Control D to duplicate it, the whole thing. And again, holding the Alt or Option key, I'm just going to move everything over here to the right. And then I'm gonna go and delete the first geometry we created. And then I'll delete the last one also, which was the red ring, and let's get rid of its material that was applied to it. We don't need this anymore. Let's hide our first geometry that we've been working on. So I'll select the parent axis and then make sure I set my selection option to branch, and then I'll hit the H key to hide this. Now, if we go to the result view quickly, you can see it is hidden. Let's go back to our schematic. Select the 3D geometry, the 3D shape that is part of this new group that we duplicated. Then go to our basics menu. You might want to look at the end result also. For our depth for the extrusion, this is what we're going to change. I'll set the depth much higher, except about 90, 91. Then let's go to the profile settings. I'll greatly increase the angle value. Maybe like drag it close to 40. Now I'll go back to my schematic and with branch selected as my selection choice, I'll select the axis of the main group and we'll unhide them by hitting the H key and then switch our options to selected because if you remember we have the main axis selected and click the reset button to undo the rotation we did before and then go back to your schematic select the second group's main axis and do the same thing click reset to undo its rotation now I want to show you how we're going to align these shapes around the circle which will be the watch in the schematic views, take another axis and drag it into our schematic. Hold shift and kiss it to our first group's main axis. And then duplicate that axis with control D. And then connect it to the main parent axis of our second group. Let's add one more axis now. And we're going to connect this by holding shift and kissing to both of these new axes we just brought into the schematic. This is now our main axis for both the different shapes that we've created. Now select the new axis that we attached to our first group. Go back to the result view and go to the object tab. And then in the Y position, let's enter minus 450 for this axis. Back in the schematic, let's select our other axis that we created and is attached to our second group. Back in the end result. And then for this axis, we're gonna also enter minus 450 for the Y position. And then let's rotate this on the X value, set it to 90 degrees. Go back to the schematic and select our other main axis for group one and enter 90 degrees for its X rotation. Let's go back to our action schematic and let's drag another axis into the scene, hold your shift key and connect it in between the axis we just adjusted and the main axis of everything. Then duplicate that and then connect this new duplicated axis 
to the axis below the other one. And then click off the very main axis and drag and create a parent-child relationship with this new axis. So this allows us to duplicate this geometry and have independent control of the two different geometries. Select the first one that we have here on the left. Let's go to our object controls. Let's look at the end result. Now start to rotate the Z position for this. Let's set it to minus 55 for the Z rotation. So now you can see we have two versions of this. That might be a little too much, so let's enter actually minus 45 for our Z rotation. Go back to the schematic, select our other axis we created. Back in the result view, for this axis, let's enter a positive 45 for the Z rotation. Go back to the schematic, select our very main axis on the top. Going back into our end result view with that axis selected. And now as we adjust the rotation for the X, the Y, or the Z, you'll notice that they're all being rotated equally with the same distance between them. So we can slide these around any position on the watch that we want. So that's it for this video.